So in this next section, we're going to consider about the difference between visualization and statistics. Okay, now visualization hasn't always been uh, as popular as it is now. And in the past, it was regarded as a bit imprecise and ill-defined. Uh, instead, people thought that statistics were a more rigorous and scientific way to understand data. And you can do that by taking maximum and minimum values or average values of, this is for numbers, obviously, of uh, numbers, averages, standard deviations, things like that. Um, in 1973, a guy called Anscombe created a tiny, tiny data set to, to uh, explode this belief. So the data set he created has just uh, four subsets, and each subset has 11 pairs of X and Y numbers. Okay, so a total of four times uh, 11 times each 11 has a uh, pair, so it's four times 11 times two, so it's 88 numbers in total. And each of these four subsets of, of um, pairs of numbers, 11 pairs of numbers, have exactly the same statistics. So, for example, they all have the same mean of the x values and y values. Uh, they have the same standard deviation. Standard deviation measures how much the values vary from the mean, so kind of how spread out they are. Uh, they have the same linear regressions. Uh, linear regression is a, is a trend line, so if you've got a set of data, you can work out whether it's going up and down, up, and up or down. Um, so if you were looking at these from a statistical point of view, you might conclude that they're essentially the same data. However, when you visualize it, uh, what he, what Anscombe had done cleverly was to show that actually this data is not at all the same visually. And when you visualize it, this is what the forwards different data sets look like. So this, uh, we've got one that looks kind of like a, this is typical data, looks like it's, it's kind of correlated, it looks like a straight line could be put through it. This is a definitely a curve. This has got an exact straight line, those three exact straight line going up through it, but there's an outlier up here. And this one, uh, data set four has is all the um, all the x values are exactly the same. So they have you have a vertical line except for this one value up here out here which is an outlier. And that of course changes the that gives you the the, um, the change in the, the mean of the uh, x and y values. So very different looking data. You may wonder where that picture came from, by the way. You can, it's in the examples that you can download that goes alongside this lecture. So it's this first one. And if you run that, uh, this data set is so well known, it's actually part of the package. It's provided as part of a package called Seaborn, and you can run that and it will generate that, that chart. OK, so um, of course, you could just look at the numbers and, and see that they're not the same. It's possible, perfectly possible with this data set because it's so small. But actually, if it was a bigger data set, if there were 1,100 values or 11,000, 11 million, it would be much, much harder to see that. So he was able to, he was able to demonstrate that the statistics is not the end of the story, that the visualization really gives you some useful insight into the data. And in fact, you know, we're very uh, visual creatures. We've spent millions of years evolving to evolving ways of uh, recognizing patterns or relative sizes is this thing bigger than that uh, colors and so on um, it can still be misleading or inconclusive but then so can statistics and both of them really they're a little bit subjective they depend on how you choose to process the data or how perhaps somebody else has chosen to process the data for you uh, and in that light here's another data set that was set up deliberately to be a little bit uh, misleading this was created in 2017 by a guy called Albert Cairo. It's a tiny data set again, 142 pairs of X and Y values. Uh, <clears throat> and if you look at the statistics for this, they don't tell you very much actually. Uh, they tell you that the average X is slightly bigger than the average Y. X has a narrow range though, so the, um, and therefore has a, a narrow, smaller standard deviation, so it's, it's not changing quite so much. Um, and you can even visualize them as line plots. But they're not particularly revealing. Let me let me run that. Here's the code for this. Uh, if I run this code, um, this uh, plots a line through the data. You can see that line of the code there. It says uh, plot line and plot dot show. That that draws this line plot. Okay, it doesn't really show us very much about the data. However, um, if you visualize them as a scatter plot. So let me close that one down. When I close that down, it will then move on to the next line of code and draw a scatter plot for us. When I close that down, that's what it looks like. So it's a picture of a, 
a crude, but it's a picture of a dinosaur, which he called the Datasaurus. And the moral of the story is don't uh, trust statistics alone. They don't tell you uh, perhaps enough. Always visualize your data. So don't get bitten by the Datasaurus. But the second moral is that actually not all visualizations are helpful. So if we'd just done the line plot and thought, well, it doesn't tell, tell us very much, let's stop there, we might not have found the, the, the picture we can see now. So it, it's, uh, as I say, it's a bit subjective just because you don't find, uh, you can't find any uh, insight or any conclusions from the data doesn't mean they're not there, it just means you may not have found them. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so let's look at the, the technologies we can use. Um, it is possible to do all these visualizations in Excel. Uh, so uh, you can just open up a spreadsheet and it's, there's some really good technologies in there to add, say, scatter plots or line plots to some uh, data that's in the spreadsheet. But the trouble with doing it that way is that they're not transferable. So if I do it for one spreadsheet, then somebody gives me another spreadsheet with the same kind of data, but maybe different year or a different day, I can't do that. I can't uh, immediately transfer it. I have to add the the chart manually again. So in, instead, what we're going to do is use Python or R scripts where we can build a script and then we can apply it to different, different spreadsheets over and over again. Uh, there's lots of uh, libraries that will help you do that, or families of libraries, perhaps you'd be better, be better to say. Uh, a really common one in Python is matplotlib and pandas. Um, Another one is Plotly and Dash. That's another visualization pair of libraries. And if you're using R, the language R, there's uh, ggplot and shiny. What we're going to focus on in this course is the, the first one, matplotlib and pandas. So most of the examples I'll be giving you will be in matplotlib, pandas. And then a little bit later on in the course, we'll get to some of the other um, bit more esoteric technologies, such as Bokeh and Panel and hvplot to do um, some more advanced stuff. Okay, and then if you if you want to see what what's possible in um, Matplotlib, here's a, a demo plot that comes with it, which shows, you know, it can do lines, it can do scatter plots. That's all these dots. It can do uh, titles. So all the kind of um, the furniture that goes around it. So the title, the, the labels, the ticks, tick marks, um, the legend, and you can also do things like annotation. So we can draw, write words on it, and uh, put a grid behind it, and uh, help to understand the data. Okay, I'm going to stop the video there and then we'll move on to actually do a, a data exploration.